wide instructions. The first building block of a more powerful PC, maybe? Probably. Create a device that saves the program output on even ticks and outputs both bytes on odd ticks. What? I don't... Create a device that saves the program output on even ticks and outputs both bytes on odd ticks. I don't... I don't have a an editor anymore. So I have this program which I cannot exactly interpret. I do not have a um, counter. And I have I don't think I cannot understand this at all. What do you even mean? What does it mean to save the program? Wait, oh sorry, save program output. What is the program output? Like, the, I'm pretty sure this just outputs the instruction. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this, I wouldn't call the current instruction in the program, the program output. You know, the, the output of a program is, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. The output of, of a program is the thing that happens outside of the program. Or is determined by all the wiring. Okay, and I also don't understand what they mean by outputs both bytes on odd ticks. Both of which bytes? What byte? Why don't... Output both bytes on odd ticks. Save. I, I really have no idea what's happening here. Saves the program output on even ticks. Saves where? I okay, I guess... I guess let's try just... to play around with this. So I have a counter. And we're gonna... We're gonna... do that. On even output, output zero on even ticks. That's not what you told me. You told me to save the program output. Oh wait. Ah, I think I think I get it now. Okay, I think they want me to save the two bytes somewhere in my circuit. And then, suddenly, I will output both of the things I saved. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Alright, so I need I need two 8-bit registers. Like so, and I will pipe them into these outputs. Something along these lines. Mm. Alright. And now I need to somehow distinguish between even and odd ticks. But the same thing will happen to both of them, right? So... Although, no, it's not the same thing that happens. And besides, I don't actually need two registers, right? Yeah, I don't think I need two registers. Uh, on, on an odd tick, I will just be directly piping out my current instruction and I will just need one saved thing okay so something like this perhaps and then I I need to load on even ticks and I need to save on or again forget I save on even and I load on odd. Okay, but again, I'm I'm just constantly the only thing I'm saving is my program output or my program byte. 
So this is going to be constantly connected. And now I just need to figure out how to iterate between these two wires. Every other tick. Um, that sounds fairly simple. Don't I just use a delay line? And a knot? I've already done stuff like this. Um, yeah. I think that's all I want. What? Oh, I connected it wrong. Like so. And then, so currently we are on an even tick, so we need to save. Okay, let me turn this around. So on an even tick, I save. And on, a, on an odd tick, I load. I think this might be it. Let's try. Wrong. Why? Output zero on even ticks. Oh, right. Okay, of course. Of course, I also need to switch this. I forgot that that was my original intention, I promise. I just forgot. So, yeah, I need to enable this switch on when I'm outputting, which means on odd ticks and an odd tick is the load line. So like this, saved, output, saved, output, saved, output. Okay. Done. Program. Didn't I already have a program? I thought I already had a pro. Oh no, I had a RAM. But RAM was different from the program. Which is actually a really weird thing. I I was gen generally under the impression that in modern computers a program is stored in RAM. You just treat that part of the RAM as some special thing. Um, okay, well, let me slightly clean this up. Like so. For example, all right. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like this is intended to be my two-byte instruction. So I'm not actually going to have a program that keeps 16-bit values. In fact, I will still have octets, uh, but I will just load two of them at a time. Uh, will it actually take me two ticks to load the two things? Well, we'll see. Guess we'll find out. Wire spaghetti. Sounds promising. Oh, our abductor is back. Finally, it is time for you to start building the leg architecture. The leg architecture is a computer that takes four bytes per tick from the program. Huh. Would you look at that? Okay, so we, we do take four bytes. Cool. The first byte describes the operation. So wait a minute. Four bytes. Am I building a 32-bit architecture? But a 32-bit architecture will allow for gigabytes of RAM. There's no way. Wait. No, probably not. I'm not actually sure what what 32-bit exactly refers to in an architecture. Uh, I was generally under the impression that your RAM is limited by how many bits you have in a pointer. And that's, that's where my association immediately goes when I hear 32 bits. Um, also, I am noticing... Okay, let's, let's finish reading the problem statement first and then I'll talk about some more stuff so the first byte describes the operation called the opcode since many operations take two arguments head or etc the second and third bytes are arguments okay since most operation return okay perfect sure 
one result, the fourth byte is for the result. Opcode, argument, argument two, result address, memory address, register. Okay, uh, but you know what? I'm also, especially considering the fact that we have an entire byte describing our memory locations, well, our register addresses, this again, this is a huge, huge amount of registers I would be able to use. This is, this is, I would say, the number of registers felt like the biggest constraint for uh, Overture. Although, again, these are registers, they aren't RAM, although I treated them like RAM, but really. We, we do actually have RAM, don't we? Custom IO. Yeah, IO RAM. Yeah, we have a 256 byte RAM. So this is what I could have used instead of registers, hypothetically. Uh, but still, I am curious. I actually have no idea how many registers real computers have, real architectures. Um, I, I sure hope it's more than six. And I'm not sure what determines the number of registers you would want or need in order for your PC to be, you know, optimal in some way. Whatever optimal means. So I, I, I still feel like six is insufficient. I feel like you would want to have more to be able to do more stuff faster. And yeah, uh, another another thing which I have a general awareness of is the fact that uh, uh, in the processor, referring to registers or loading or, you know, doing operations on information or on data from registers is a much, much faster operation than actually going all the way to RAM and back. And for processor speeds, loading from RAM and back is an incredibly slow operation. So yeah, it feels like having more registers would generally be good, the more the better. But I'm not sure. Okay. So still, rant is not over yet. I have another thing I would like to mention. It's the fact that I never really optimize this spaghetti wiring of my overture and do I want to do that before I proceed with leg are we going to be building leg on top of our overture because it looks like I'm starting and it looks like I'm starting on top of overture hmm yeah let's try to read what we're actually what what they actually expect of us this time the following are the setup steps that needs what the following are the setup steps that needs steps need that's a weird s here to be done in order to complete this level check the schematic oh no i checked the schematic i can and everything went away. Check the schematic icon. Aha! Okay. Okay, good. This answers my question. Create a new empty architecture. Place a program block with four outputs. Place a counter. Set its increment to four. Okay, let's just... I think it's going to be faster if I just follow it. Step by step. So let's create a new schematic. I think I'm free to call it leg. Hello there, leg. Let's see. Okay. Click the schematic icon. Done. Create a program block with four outputs. Well, or not create. Place a program block with four outputs. So this is our new program. With... Haha! <laughs> Now the three pins are understandable, or 
rather, sorry, none of the three pins actually are visible, they actually exist in this world, as opposed to being just unusable void. Okay, so we have our program block. Now, place a counter, set its increment to four, and connect it to the program block. Okay, so, right, I guess this means we can, we do load, while we do load four bytes, we actually load from the first offset, from the first address. So I could, for example, load, yeah, that's just, I think I can just do that. You know, one, yeah, I see. Two. All right, so we want our program counter, 8-bit counter connected, and right, I remember actually, yeah, I, I remember finding this at some point, increment by, counter does nothing with a zero, yeah, of course, of course it does nothing, uh, I, I recall discovering this increment at some point, earlier, but I don't think I actually implemented it myself. Counter. Right? Yeah, I have my counter adds one. And this is my plus one unfolded, which why is it so? Why is it so untidy? Oh, I guess that's why. Well, whatever. It's not that's a question for another time. So yeah, it's, I did plus one. Uh, it's a bit, a bit unfair that I just get a plus four or plus N for free. Although I guess it would be the same thing, except I would have an actual adder in here and I would have a memory buffer with, uh, you know, with the increment. So I guess it's fine. It's not, it's not too difficult to implement. So let's, let's just categorize that as busy work. Okay, so we're done with the counter. Add six registers or custom components. Okay, I do not like this. Why is it six? Why is it six? One. Let's space them out a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why is it six? We have uh... this. Is, this seems wasteful, does it not? Because in our in our ah, goodness, uh, yeah, we have the first byte describes the operation. Uh, Many operation, two arguments. Goodness, where? Second and third byte are for arguments. So I have an entire byte to address my registers. So I could, hypothetically at least, have 256 registers. I don't actually want to build a thing with 256 registers. I think I would go mad. But still, six seems very much insufficient. Uh, well, all right. I mean, I, I placed them, sure. So. Six it is. Custom components with registers. Well, yes, that's what I did. Click edit link components on the program component and connect re registers to 0 to 5. Correct. From 0 to 5, 0 through 5 work. Okay, connect the counter to 6. Oh, connect registers to 0 to 5. Okay, where's my edit link component? So I've, I've seen this. I think I've, I've noticed this before. I still don't exactly understand what this is. So zero, connected, okay, one, two. I felt like this is, yeah, I think this is diagnostic information and I think that's what was showing up uh, on the left, or sorry, on the right in my code editor. 
But I never actually... I don't know, it wasn't... I couldn't quite read it. Okay, connect the counter to 6 and the output to 7. Oh, alright. Why no input though? Counter to 6 and output to 7, but no input. I would like to connect input as well. Apparently not. Alright, that's done. Uh, finally, in this level, the opcode is always zero. This means we add argument one and argument two and save the result to the destination. Okay, again, this is... This is not stated very precisely because I don't add argument one and argument two, right? I don't save results to save 14, seven plus seven. I don't save them to zero, register zero. But I think, I assume they mean the reasonable architecture that loads from this address and from this address, and it adds and stores to this address, to this, I don't know what you would call it, offset. So, okay, we have five registers. We have the counter now, for some reason. All right. The next level, I will implement more opcodes. Okay. All right. This is, but this is just overture. So far, this is just overture, except, uh, well, I have some, I have some um, more you know, expertise or experience uh, using Overture and building it. And I think what I might want to do, I might want to, because, uh, so, because uh, input, output, and counter this time, Overture didn't have this feature, I don't think. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Overture just had the jump, which was directly connected to the counter. But now we can put arbitrary things to the counter. So I think what I might want to do is basically this. Since I have my line of registers, which I am fine with, I think a vertical line of registers is okay. How about I do this? This is just for alignment. So I'll have, this is gonna be my address six and address seven. Well, input and output will need to be, I'm not sure how I'm gonna arrange this, but this is the basic idea. And the counter I can just connect up. Which we'll, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I think, I think, I feel like this is a decent idea. This, this would make sense. This is a logical ali uh, yeah, alignment of my components, but I'm still I'm still confused. Why why have such a huge 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 addressing scheme? Why use an entire byte just to encode seven destinations or eight eight destinations? Because that I can just copy from over sure. All right. Well, I guess I will just do that now. Yeah, I'll just... Okay, I'll, I'll start building the wiring and I'll be back. Okay, quick update. So, exactly the same thing as Overture, except now instead of uh, decoding a single byte. So, let's, let's take a look at that real quick. So this thing had, had a single instruction and from it we took three bits and piped them into this decoder and three bits and piped them into this decoder. Instead, I just piped the entire byte. Huh, this is available in Overture now, okay. Uh, I just take a single byte and I decode it in place, pretty much. Right, the, the whole thing. So this is my argument one, my argument two, my argument three, or I guess this is output and they are split into those three bits and decoded using a basic decoder. And now I'm just gonna 
to the standard setup of I need to so this is my output right so output will need to be saved so kind of like like this and I'll do this and I'll be back hmm okay here's an interesting observation about the differences between leg and overture of course now that we have two inputs as opposed to just one well basically we, we mostly used these decoders for copying from and to in in overture right but here we actually have two things we need to load and this means I cannot have a single mega bus, which the way I called it, right? I cannot simply connect all these together and load them in, into a single value because two values are going to be loaded at the same time, right? And this actually, this is a, uh, an interesting difference um, I think I still should be able to have just two things loaded right I will have two buses and each of these guys will be connected to both except of course I cannot do this I would need separate connections like so and I could have them switched or, actually, this is a mux. Ah, except that's a reverse mux. That's an inverse mux. Right, so... Uh, based on... So, let's say I am loading from this guy, right? But I might be loading from it as the first argument, or I might be loading from it as the second argument, right? This would be my argument zero line. Goodness. It's my argument zero line, and this is my argument one line right and based on where i come from whether i come from zero or from one here i would need to load into this strip or into this strip and i think what i want to do is i want to use a reverse mux but i don't have a reverse mux do i do two switches or or actually i feel like i've been under using the custom command thing place component factory and I feel confident enough actually going in and building my own mux because I think I think I wanted a reverse mux for something else already and it, se it seems like an entirely reasonable uh, gate to build don't I don't I have it I don't think I do I have a decoder But a decoder is not that, not quite. I want a mox. Yeah, you know what? I'll head over to the factory and let's build. What is this? This is decoder. Um, did I? I, I don't remember opening it. Okay, I must have. All right, let's see. So let's let's call it our mox. Reverse mux or inverse mux or mux. I don't know mux two uh, because this would be mux one. It it it, it two. <laughs> I would call it mux one into two, like so. That I think that's probably going to be the most readable thing. So we want I/O. We want one input and we want two outputs one two and we also want a one bit input that will decide where I'm going and it's a pretty simple setup I just use a decoder on this guy and I think I use two switches here and here I pipe this into both. 
Oh, can I have a, a disabled... I would want a disabled uh, a gray pin on the output. Switch. Okay. 8 bits switched output. On the outputs is if the switched pin is... Okay, I want this actually. Uh, but that means I don't need switches. That means this is going to be incredibly cheap. I just... This is all. This is all. Wow. Except uh, I think I want them the other way around. Right? Although, no, if we're off, you want the first guy. If we're on, we want the second guy. Yeah, no, this is it. Could I make this bi-directional? Switched probe. I don't have bi-directional switched pins. I guess maybe it's impossible to lock. Oh, right, this must be the thing I enabled in the settings. I'm gonna disable it because I have no idea what it what it does. Yeah, I've... Uh... Okay. Okay, well, this is this is me, though. I'll, I'll clean this up. Okay, this is the most compact I could get it. Uh, well, it's, it probably can be improved even more, but uh, this is it. I mean, you want compact components, don't you? But it looks like it's too compact. This custom component cannot be used as it has no area down here. Not sure what they mean by area, so if I just... Do you have area now? No? It has no area. What do you mean? You... I don't get it. Something changed here. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, why did this change? Now they're there. Now it's one. Does it? Oh, wait a minute. I also don't, I only have one input. Okay. Well, now this definitely has an area. Okay, okay, okay. So. Oh, maybe it has to do with these squares. That's not intuitive. Okay, can I now squish it? No area. Okay, is this because I put the guy... Yeah. I think this might be... So, it looks like the area might be calculated... So, if you look at... If you look here... This square... Is... In my area, I guess. And... It's exactly where the decoder is. Yeah, and now if I move it, if I if I now move decoder across the squares, yeah, the the thing changes. So I want. I guess I want my decoder this way, and then something like this. Um. All right. And it works, it seems. This is allowed. Hmm. Okay. I don't. I don't mind. Sure. Sure. This is gonna be my uh, reverse mux. Two one mux. Hello. Or one two mux. Sorry. Get me back to my level. Cool. Hello. Yeah. 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 Got all this. Do we have our mux? Mux. It's not readable. Uh, okay, let's try and... Can I name it? Yeah, I can rename it. It's too small. Uh, let's call it... Let's call it Splitter. Split. 
because it takes one signal and splits it into two, optionally. Okay, okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe all these guys into splitters. Like so. And uh, I will have my two. So I don't think I want any spacing between these necessarily. So I will want to decide whether I split based on... This is an okay. That's that's um... so. First of all, I want to decide when I even want to load, which is a question in itself, right? I only want to load when well, I, not only, but I want to load to load when any guy, when the first input or the second input requests a load from me. So let's let's let it breathe even more. This is probably too much, but I can condense it later. Um, so I load from this guy based on actually an or of my two things. Should I perhaps? Do this differently. So here's here's what I'm thinking. I will have eight ores anyways, right? Well, maybe not eight. Maybe this will uh, something else would happen for these. But I'll have at least six ores. And I'm thinking maybe instead I could do a eight bit or bitwise logic or just for the loads. So I would have another contraption like this, you know, somewhere. Not sure. I think I think the best place for it would be at position zero. Let's just I'll I'll, I'll just play around with this for for a moment, and I or my one and two. And I pipe this ore into here, and this just tells me whether... Wait. What? Oh, no, 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 that's... That's not what I want to do. I want to... <laughs> See? I want to... Get rid of all this, that's not correct. What I'm oring is not the input bytes, but rather... I am oring a combined version of these these guys. I'm I'm not sure that's a good idea. Okay, well, so we we have the idea. So the idea is there. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. Uh, but let's first decide on what. We know we know how we're gonna load, right? We're gonna have some ore somewhere at some point. We're gonna have an ore, and we're gonna load. The question is, now that we are loading, how do we decide whether or not we want to go up or down? Uh, maybe it's not a splitter. Maybe it's like a decoder. It's like an eight-bit decoder. You know. Yeah, it, it is. It is an 8-bit version of the decoder. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'll do that. Switch so schematic. 8 deck. Done. Go back. Does it fit? Quiet, but it's fine. So, I will have this input. Now, when do I want to go up? I will want to go up... So let's say this is our first, up is first, and this is second. I will want to go up when this guy is on, 
and this guy is off. So I want this and not this. Now, wait, that's not. Oh, whoa, 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 goodness me, this is completely wrong. I see. Okay, sorry, that's wrong. This is wrong because I can have loading from X and from X. As in fact I do here. My first argument can be loaded from here and my second argument can be loaded from here. So a decoder is not what I want. I actually literally want two switches. Although again, I would probably want to use a custom component for this. Right, I would have this thing as uh, two binary inputs and two things like that, instead of having to put a huge contraption of two switches. Although, maybe it's fine. Maybe this is okay. Right, and I'll have this and this as my deciders. Like so. Right. Would this be would this be good? That looks that looks okay to me. Yeah, I think I think let's go with this. Let's go with this. My 8-bit my 8-bit decoder turned out to be a pointless digression. But alas. Um so let's go let's move everything up again. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Alright, so this is gonna be one, this is gonna be two. So this guy goes into here. No, that's not correct. <laughs> this guy goes into here. And this guy goes into here. Right, I'll wire this up. So I've done the basic wiring. Uh, I haven't yet done these because these are going to be different, but yeah, we put exactly the same as I just explained. Uh, but we have light blue for input one, darker blue, can I call it blue, for input two, and green for output because green associates with save. <laughs> so now the question is what do we do with these guys? Okay, so bit well this is the same this is gonna be the same is it not right we'll have this piped into two switches just like so uh, and we'll have wires connecting this way oops Whoa, wait a moment. Just you wait a minute. But my program counter is going to influence everything always. I cannot have... I cannot read anything from... Wait a minute. So... Yeah, of course, I can I can see how this is a circular dependency, but then my problem statement is impossible. I cannot put a delay in this loop. The value of an argument or destination. So argument or destination is counter, so I need to be able to read from counter. Oh, uh, perhaps, yeah, I think I think I messed this up slightly. Uh, at least, at least uh, I need uh, to keep my counter line, right? Uh, so this counter line has to always go to program. That's, I don't think that should help with the circular dependency, but that was wrong. I don't want the actual counter line switch, but now this looks like it doesn't produce a circular dependency. 
which is weird because it totally should. It absolutely should. Why is this not a circular dependency? I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, let's bring this one down. So we're evenly spaced. I don't get why this is not a circular dependency. Oh, wait, because the output of this switch does not actually go to the program. Okay, sure. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so now we're gonna have inputs and outputs. And, well, I just, yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same right here, right? That's, that's just what I do. I just do switches and input is on the input. Yeah, uh, but that will be my OR setup, which I'm still not sure how I'm gonna do. But hmm. Okay. We switched down from here and up from here. Let's move this two spaces down as well. One, two. And now the output. I I don't have a read from the output, so the output is not relevant. But the output I write to. So this is kind of my... This output pin is kind of my... The equivalent of this thing, right? The equivalent of the save value pin. Okay, okay, this, this, this is good, this works. So now, let's say blue is our input one, so let's, let's reuse the color. And we're gonna load into light blue over here. And we're gonna load into whatever. We're gonna load into this using the second guys. So like so and like so. Like so, right? I'll wear this up. Okay, we have this now. So our output two or input input two and input one. So that's good. Uh, now now that this is done, let's get back to the question of ors. Do I or the two bytes? Or do I use singular ors? I st I'm still tempted to use to, to or bytes. Because I do not like seeing ORs over here or anywhere else in, inside of my computer. I mean, it's just one OR more expensive, right? I only don't, I don't need it here on the counter because the counter is always loaded. Uh, which is actually an interesting question as well. Why would I even ever use why not? Why not always load? I don't. Huh. If I'm if I'm switched anyways, based on these guys, why not just constantly load? Because I I do this for my counter and I expect it to be fine. Why not? Spin. I think I think that pin might remain completely unused. As well as this one, just just load always. Is is something wrong with this switch setup? Maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm ready to find out. Let's go. Let's just do this. Input. And again, I can just constantly. I can just put an on here. Can I not? Why not? Why not have a constantly 
enable the input. If it's if it's only going into switches, then we're fine. Yeah. Yeah, there's no I see no point. So I don't need I I'm not gonna orbite. Guess I'll find out later what, why this is a bad idea, but for now, I don't see a problem. Okay, so now we've loaded the two guys, and we need to implement our save setup. Uh, but we're not going to be saving from the inputs anymore. We're actually going to have another line. Something along these lines for the output and this output line I can pipe back into my registers yeah I think that's it okay I'll wire this up okay that's all wired up and I think for now I don't even care about the opcode and I can just hard code an addition and just do it addition so it's just one, two, three, whatever. Doesn't matter because we're going to be implementing a different ALU and then we'll make this neat. So let's test. Um, argument one, input eight. Let's see, so is something good happening here? Argument one, input eight. So the input is active, it's switched, it's switched, yes. We add 16 and we put into registers. Great success. No problem. No need for ORs. I might wanna, uh, so. I might I think I might want to save this as another schematic as a custom schematic. Again, I feel I feel more free using custom schematics now because I'm already to what I assume is the final project I'm building in this game. So I I kind of feel like I already know everything there is to know and now I just need to build stuff. And yeah. But I still yeah. I, I'm still not sure if I know enough to really get rid of this pin entirely. As well as this one, of course. Okay. Well. Is that gonna be it for me? Or can I do another level? Opcodes. Implement the following opcodes. Well, I already have the... A ALU and I think it's it has all these so add sub and or not XOR add sub and or not XOR add sub and or not XOR oops no it doesn't it doesn't five of codes that's not many again I have a whole byte for codes and or six again, sorry, six. Six of codes. That's not much. Nah, I'm I'm gonna do that next time. And I'm afraid this wire spaghetti is gonna have to be it for me for now. 